I think a winning issue for Republicans, if we're going to talk about removing things from the budget and cutting the debt and deficit is immediately cutting U.S. aid. Why are we funding countries that hate us? Why yeah. are we giving money to the Palestinian Authority? I think that is where I would start, at least if I were an elected official, is talking about how we can make cuts to U.S. aid. It's issues of the economy, affordability, gun rights, property rights, the ability to grow your produce on your land and control what you can and cannot put into your body. Those are the issues that I'm hearing about. All right, folks, welcome back to The Sean Spicer Show. We are halfway through the work week, actually more than halfway through the work week. I'm glad you're with us. Um, thanks for joining us again today. Before we get to this great episode, will you do me a favor? Hit the subscribe button right now. And if you're feeling a little generous in your heart, a little giving, uh, go over to Apple and Spotify. You can still be watching the show while you do this and just subscribe there to the audio version. If you're listening to the audio version, then I'm sorry, you need to go to the YouTube or Rumble version and do the same. It's a switch day. Take care of the other formats for us. That's super helpful. All right, as I said, we got a lot to get into today. Scott Pressler is going to join us. I'll tell you about that in a second uh, to talk about what we need to do on the ground. A lot happening. New leadership at the RNC. What does that mean for our prospects in November? Congressman Ken Buck from Colorado had already said he wasn't going to run. Then he announces yesterday out of nowhere, nope, next week I'm actually out of here. I'm calling it quit. That's going to take the Republican majority down to dose. Two votes. And think about this. People get sick, travel issues, family commitments, personal commitments, whatever. This is going to be a tough, tough road to hoe for Speaker Mike Johnson. Plus today, a big victory though, for those of us who love America and don't like China, uh, the House voted in a bipartisan way, well over two thirds, that TikTok uh, needs to be owned by the US and be broken up and not owned by the Chinese government. By the way, China put out a statement saying that they didn't approve of this. And by why would they say that they care about legislation that they didn't control? Think about that the next time somebody says China doesn't control the app. China specifically came out against it. Uh, and then um, the Fulton County Superior Judge rules that six counts against Donald Trump down there in Fonnie Willis's case. No bueno, kicking him out. Good news for Donald Trump. But we've got a great conversation ahead with Scott Pressler about what we need to do to win, to turn out people. He leads the Early Vote Action Group. We'll talk about that. Uh, but before we get to that, I want to tell you about two of the amazing sponsors that help this show be brought to you every night for you. So let me talk about them before we get into this great conversation with Scott. When things go south, are you going to be ready? Ready for that crisis when power goes out? Think about it. With all of the natural disasters that are occurring, attacks on our power grid, will you be ready? I will be. I have a Patriot Power Generator 2000X in my home. If the power goes out, I will be ready to power my fridge, our tablets for our kids, their computers, televisions, radios, whatever it needs, our phones, all of that can be taken care of through the Patriot Power Generator 2000X. The best part about the Patriot Power Generator 2000X is that it's powered through solar power. You get two free solar panels that come with it to power it. So you've got no gas. You don't have to worry about fumes or noise. You can bring it into your house. You can travel with it. No matter what, you, your family, your loved ones will be taken care of in times of crisis. It can even power your fridge. The best part, as I said, is that you don't need to worry about going and getting gas and refilling it. The solar panels that come free with it will be your saving grace. Go to fourpatriots.com slash Spicer, fourpatriots.com slash Spicer to get your Patriot Power Generator 2000X and be ready in a time of crisis. All right, folks, in this ever-changing economy with the ups and the downs, if you want a place to diversify your investments, call my friends at Bishop Gold Group, or you can check them out at bishopgoldgroup.com slash Sean, or give them a call, 844-984-1616. Now, you're getting bombarded with ads for golds and precious metals. Bishop Gold Group are the people that I trust. They're the people that I called. Yes, I've actually put my money 
in Bishop Gold Group's hands and said, tell me how to grow my investments. So if you've got a 401k, an IRA, or you just want to expand your investments with precious metals, these guys will sit down with you and talk about the best strategy for you, just like I did. And it, the way the economy's going now, you need a place, whether it's gold, silver, or other precious metals, they will tailor a plan for you. Bishop Gold Group are the people that I trust. It's integrity, it's transparency, and these guys have the understanding of the market to tell you where to be based on your needs. Go to bishopgoldgroup.com to begin your journey with uh, precious metals. You get a free gift if you do that, or call 844-984-1616. Thank you. Scott, as I understand it, we're actually catching you at home today, a place that you probably don't spend a ton of time at these days. That's right. I come home till I do laundry and just uh, stock up on hair conditioner, but I'll be back on the road pretty soon. <laughs> So where have you been the last, you're, you're always, whenever I see you on Twitter, X, whatever we're calling it, you're in a different place, meeting with people, telling, you know, kind of showing the fruits of your labor, who you've converted, who you've brought over, how many people you've registered. Well, in the last month, I went to uh, 12 different stops in five days in the great state 48 in Arizona. And then I went over to Las Vegas for the RNSD, Restoring National Confidence Turning Point Action Conference. And then I've spent the last two weeks in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania going everywhere from Butler, which is Pittsburgh, to the middle of the state, State College, to dealing with the Amish, to going over to Northeast Pennsylvania, the home of Joe Biden in Scranton, which, by the way, those areas are turning to the right away from Joe Biden. And now I'm home for a couple of days to do organizing, making sure that, for example, we're getting people to be at every single Wisconsin gun show for the next couple months. So this is an organization time for me. Awesome. Uh, you mentioned you were at the RNC Turning Point event. Uh, did you actually go to the RNC big event on March 8th when they had the turnover? No, no, I have I have not been there for the turnover. Okay. I was there to show support for, you know, bringing all of the county chairs together and making sure that they have the tools necessary to win this November. So let's start with that before I get to the new leadership, because I want to ask you, when you were at that meeting, when you were with more of the grassrootsy type, uh, the county chairs, what, 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 what did they... What were those conversations like? What tools do they need? What support are they getting or not? Well, I think they need more data. You know, I have my own organization, Early Vote Action, and we have our own app. And when I go from state to state to county to county, my intention is not to be the game in town. It's to be complimentary. And so I ask people, for example, I say, hey, is the Pennsylvania GOP giving you data? And when I hear from Butler County, Pennsylvania, no, the PA GOP is not giving them data, that's an opportunity for me to come in because we provide door knocking lists, phone calling lists, uh, text messaging, as well as postcards. I mean, we have, Sean, hundreds of volunteers across the entire United States right now at this very second writing letters into swing states like PA. And so these county chairs really needed training they needed the data, they needed the tools to access and use the data because we all know that the Republican Party mantra for so long has been keep it small, keep it all. And now we are coming in as these outside organizations to give data and access to these groups. See, this is what I find so fascinating about what you're saying because the idea when I was there uh, prior to 2016 was that we would spend all this money on data we'd give the state parties access and the state party would then give it to the local unit chair. So the counties, the cities, et cetera. But it sounds like what you're saying is that's not actually happening. They're not, we're spending all this money collecting data, enriching the data file. And then there's a, a backlog or a clog in the pipeline, getting it to the people on the ground. Yes. Well, th that's been my experience that these county parties, if they are given any data, I mean, this data is held so close to the GOP's and RNC's chest. It's almost like they don't uh, trust or they don't want to give full access when that data is going to help elect all of our Congress right. people and, and governors and state representatives. So no, my experience has been that if these parties are given data, it is a small, finite amount of data. It's not even giving the data, right? I mean, that's that's we're acting like sort of like 
like you're coming over with food. Like here is a tray <laughs> of data. But in fact, it should be, I mean, the way that, again, going back to when I was there, which is close to 10 years now, the idea was that they would have access to the data, that they could go in and they could say, hey, Scott Pressler just walked 14 neighbors, neighborhoods. Here's what he found out. They enrich the data. They add that. They append the data file. So they say, we met Mrs. Smith. Mrs. Smith is a gun owner. She cares about education. You append the voter file, enriching it so that when the gubernatorial candidate or the state ledge candidate goes out, they now have that information. But yes. if it's not happening, then that's actually not how it's, it, it's... The whole idea was, again, that everybody on the ground was enriching it. It's not just handing it to them to use. It's access so that it's, it's a two-way street. The people like you and others on the ground are taking the findings and the people that you meet, if you register someone, if you find out someone, that you're putting it back into the data file so that everything that we know about a, a voter helps the entire ticket. Correct. Well, and that's why I'm very clear and overt when I'm talking to people who use my application, because I know this game. And I say, look, whatever data you put in, we will give back to you. This is not the Scott Pressler show. This is not early vote action. If you spend all that time door knocking and fostering those relationships and collecting that data, that should be for you to use and access. So for example, when we knock on doors, if somebody's not home and we're just walking the neighborhood, you know, we're just getting a, an idea of our neighbors. There's a note section in there where you can put, for example, you know, back the blue, firefighter, St. Francis of Assisi statue, you know, anything that would denote maybe positive conservative leaning. And then that data we can have on the back end and then give back to these groups. So yes, it should be cyclical. It should be cyclical. Are you guys working to stay on this for a second? Do you guys share that data, not just with the people maybe in the organization, but are there other organizations that are enriching that data that you guys are sharing with as well? So, uh, you know, t let's say uh, Susan B. Anthony, the pro-life group, they're out there doing something. Are you guys working with them? Do they have access to your data, your app? Are they enriching it? I can't speak for any of those groups at this moment in time, but I will tell you, the hope, the goal is to have Tea Party Patriots and Jenny Beth Martin working with Turning Point Action and Tyler Boyer, working with Early Vote Action and Scott Pressler. So yes, the goal is to have all of us coordinating and working together under this beautiful umbrella because as PACs, we can do so. And so that is the, the hope that all of this data, for example, one thing with Georgia after the 2020 election, you know, when we were going down there for the, the Senate runoff, right? One thing that was happening that's criminal is you had wonderful groups like Susan B. Anthony, and then you had AFP, and then you had NRA, and then you had GOP. Now, what we were finding when I was knocking doors myself is that some of these voters were like, oh yeah, we've already had seven people <laughs> come to our door asking for our vote, which, I understand in politics that it takes 13 touches to get a voter out to the door. But the fact of the matter is we need better coordination. So yes. for example, if we're doing ATL ad Ignatium, then why are we not doing North Georgia to get out, you know, Marjorie Taylor Greene's district? And why are we not doing Savannah? And why, you know, so we just need better communication. Well, and better coordination, because to your point, if seven groups, if Susan B. Anthony, AFP, and the NRA are all knocking on, let's just hypothetically, you know, Scott Pressler's door. They should know that, hey, we've already gone there. NRA went there. Scott is with us. Don't yes. waste time. Go to, you know, someone else's door. That's yes. what's missing, right? I mean, the coordination piece, I think, is the biggest issue among all these groups. It costs a lot of money to register and to walk. And if you're going to do it, then legally, you guys are allowed to coordinate. Yes. Well, and furthermore, I'm even finding this with our gun show voter registration, Sean, you know, because I've been pushing this hard, talking about the fact that 40 percent, 40 percent of Wisconsin hunters are not registered to vote. Oh. And in fact, so many gun shows across the country, because people have been going to gun show trader, T-R-A-D-E-R dot com, that a lot of these gun shows have been inundated with people wanting to work them. And in fact, some of our volunteers will run into other volunteers, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because it shows activism, it shows engagement. But what we need is a big, beautiful, 
shared calendar so we can go, okay, Sean Spicer is going to the Houston gun show while Scott Pressler is going to the Pittsburgh gun show while Mark is going to the Philly gun show. And then that way we are dividing and conquering, which is how it should be. And, and but it, to your point, agreed 100 percent. Right. You know, it's like get a Google calendar uh, and coordinate. Is that conversation starting? Yes. Yes. OK, good. And, and, I, and, and I, that I don't want to speak for anyone else, but I will say the synergy that was created there at the Turning Point Action Conference in Las Vegas, I think, was palpable. And uh, and those kinds of conversations have begun. Yes, sir. Good. I mean, I honestly think that's the key to this. So I, I want to get back to this for a second. I mean, excuse me, in a second. But I, I something at the beginning. So I, I was joking about had, potentially having you go over to the RNC, but let's just be clear. What was the status of your relationship with the previous leadership of the RNC? Well, a lot has changed since. No, I no, no. I know, I know that, but I want to let's baby <laughs> step this. Previous so, leadership, how was it? So, uh, well, I'll I'll put it this way: my relationship with the previous RNC administration was non-existent. I had even publicly and overtly, but respectfully tried to reach out to the chairwoman of the RNC for over 300 days, nearly a year, reaching out to that administration, falling on deaf ears. And so that was my relationship with the previous RNC. Now, just, and I'm being, just again, baby step this, when you say falling on deaf ears, right? So I get maybe the, the chairwoman is busy. Does an assistant or another staffer acknowledge you in any way and say, hey, she's really busy, Scott, but we can meet with you? Or is it ears plural, like no one ever actually responds to you? Well, I, I will give credit to one person. And that one person is Casey Crosby of Kentucky, the great Commonwealth of Kentucky. Because Daniel Cameron last year was running for governor in 2023. Right. And so she did reach out to me. I have- And, wait, so and, and who is Casey Crosby? So the audience knows. Oh, so, so to the audience, she is uh, the treasurer of the RNC. So, I mean, she is a part of the national RNC apparatus. Okay. So up there, with the likes of uh, former chairwoman McDaniel, Michael Watley, Laura Trump, et cetera. Okay, so now we have new leadership. As you mentioned, Michael Watley, the chairman of the North Carolina party is the new chair. Laura Trump, the president's daughter-in-law, she's married to Eric. She is now the co-chair. There's actually a new chief of staff, Chris Saliza, who is dual-hatted. He's on the campaign. He's coming over to be chief of staff. Have you had, and again, it's only been five days or whatever, have you had any contact with them or do you have any relationship with them? Uh, I have not received a phone call yet. However, uh, Mrs. Trump, Laura, in preparation for her being elected as co-chair, was going on radio programs on Mark K. She was with Sarah Gonzalez of Blaze Media. And she did overtly not only give me praise, but said that the RNC is going to be shifting gears and hopefully working towards ballot harvesting. And these are all things that I've been speaking about for the last year and a half. But Laura did mention my name and gave me praise. So if uh, the RNC does give me a phone call, I will gladly welcome that conversation. That's great. That's good to hear. Okay, so let, let's get back to the, the coordination and the data and everything. When you, when you guys go out there, um, you, you mentioned all of the tells that you kind of see. So somebody, Hey, I'm a gun owner, or I have a back the blue bumper sticker, maybe on my car and you're inputting it. Do they, do, do you guys, what, what, what sort of other things do you see out there? Are there issues that are driving people to vote? For example, I mean, you mentioned Pennsylvania. Um, is there, are there issues that are maybe bubbling up into national polls or that we're seeing that you go, gosh, we really need to tap into uh, school board reform, for example, uh, or something like that that is just not seen and that we need to start focusing on maybe in a micro way that, hey, in, in yes. Butler County in Pennsylvania, we have a real opportunity to focus on an issue that could be big, yes. swinging the western part of Pennsylvania. 
Oh, I'm ready. This is a great question. So, no. <laughs> well, I'll know, call never, on you, Scott. <laughs> uh, well, to the neophyte, to the person that doesn't know a lot of politics right now, you're probably thinking the same thing I was. You're thinking illegal immigration. That is the key pinnacle focal issue of this election. And I agree. But what Sean is really trying to get at to the viewers at home is what are some of the underlying issues that are percolating at the local level that will drive turnout and could therefore influence a congressional or a statewide election? And for example, Pennsylvania, let me start there. And then I do want to put a note to talk about Alaska because it's very important because we spoke about it last time. So this is something when I'm talking about the Amish community, did yeah. you know that the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture is waging a war on raw milk in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania? They are going after farms, after farmers, after milk, and they are waging a war against a gentleman by the name of Amos Miller, who is an Amish dairy farmer. So this has been happening for a decade. It's nothing new. This is just something that's continuing to go on. And so when I heard about his court case that just happened a few weeks ago, we were working with farmers from Ohio, from Wisconsin, and they had a protest outside of the Lancaster County Courthouse. Lancaster is kind of the Amish hub of Pennsylvania. And so we wanted to show our avert attention to that issue, which, by the way, why is this so important? Scott, why are you talking about the Amish so much? Pennsylvania was won by Joe Biden by 80,000 votes. There are 80,000 Amish in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. If we activated them, if we mobilized them, the Amish could literally save the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and therefore the White House. And so- yeah targeting this issue, talking about raw milk. We were there at the courthouse and we did register Amish people to vote. And when I traveled the entire state, going from Butler to Mifflin County to Lancaster, I am talking about Amos and the message is first Amos, then us. This is an issue that's going to impact all of America, gardeners, etc. But real quick, one other point, I was just invited to Alaska there is an, uh, a wonderful group. I think on Twitter, his name is at 907 Honest or Honest 907. Get this. In the great state of Alaska, they have successfully gotten enough signatures to have a vote to repeal ranked choice voting in oh. the great state of Alaska. I know. Thank God. Ranked choice voting time. is the death of us. I don't. Oh, yes. my God. Thank goodness you brought this up. So I will be traveling. I just, to real, real quick, real, real quick. I just want to, I, I don't want to, because there's some yes. people that are listening that might say, okay, you guys just glossed over that real quick. And I, I want to oh. pause. <laughs> and can you just explain what ranked choice voting is? Let me, uh, first, I'm going to start with uh, a quote that's going to uh, open eyes. Lisa Murkowski is the only Republican in America who has won and benefited from ranked choice voting. If that gives you any indication <laughs> of the danger of ranked choice voting. Basically, what ranked choice voting means is you have several candidates, right? You probably have a Republican who's MAGA. Maybe you'll have a Republican that isn't so MAGA, like Mitt Romney or Lisa Murkowski. And then you'll have a Democrat, right? So let's just start with three options. So ranked choice voting means that you would be able to put in order from one, two, or three, one being your first choice, three being your last, in order of candidates you would like to see a win. And so, for example, this is why ranked choice voting is dangerous and why it would be the death of conservatism in the country. Because if I'm a Democrat, how am I going to list my options? I'm going to start with the Democrat because I want that person in there. And let's say I'm in a state like Utah or Alaska or Idaho that are so blood red. Well, I'm going to want the Democrat to get in there. And if the Democrat isn't going to win, which is probably likely, I as a Democrat am going to put my second choice as the least conservative candidate, as your Mitt Romney, as your anti-MAGA uh, America last candidate. And that's why Lisa Murkowski in part one in 2022 and defeated Shabaka, who was our MAGA conservative candidate in Alaska for Senate, endorsed by President Trump. She lost our candidate because of ranked choice voting. And, and look at Peltola. Peltola is a Democrat congresswoman yeah. 
in the state of Alaska, and she won despite Republicans getting more votes. This is actually, if you really want to talk about being Democratic. Just so, just so the audience gets this, and under ranked choice voting, you have to get 50%. Yes. So a normal election, you could have won with yes. a plurality, 46, 47, 48%. And it keeps making the bottom person drop off. Yes. So to your point, what happens is then the Dems still get to vote because their second choice is the squishy Republican, right? That would have been, if you vote for the MAGA candidate as your first, you're probably not gonna vote for the Democrat second, you vote for the squishy Republican. Therefore, yeah. your vote combines with the Dems to elect the squishy Republican, i.e. Murkowski. And they created a system, they knew exactly what they were doing. Uh, and that's, I, 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 I'm so glad you brought this up because I think it is sold as such a nice panacea. Ranked choice voting <laughs> will get rid of the partisanship and it'll allow this. And all oh. it is is a, is a way, to your point, for these guys to go into red states and make sure that they undermine getting a conservative winner. Yes. No, you flushed it out. Perfect. <laughs> yes, sir. Attention, animal lovers. If you've rescued dogs like I have, then you're going to want to check out the work of Delta Rescue. And you go to deltarescue.org. You can see it for yourself. My friend Leo Grillo, he started this all by rescuing one Doberman, and he named the dog Delta. And that stands for dedication and everlasting love to animals. That's become an enduring mission for Leo. It's now a no-kill sanctuary, not a shelter, a no-kill sanctuary. They take care of dogs, cats, horses that need nutrition, veterinary care, whatever, and they can roam free. This is all because Leo Grillo has created this mission. And our five, 10, 15, $100,000 donations keep the work of Delta Rescue going on. But if we wanna make this an enduring mission, to help this work that Leo has started go on for a lifetime, then check out the estate planning kit that they've got there and see if you can make Delta Rescue part of your estate so that this mission continues for a lifetime. DeltaRescue.org, check out what they do, check out the estate planning kit and help support this great, great cause. Let's let's get back to Pennsylvania for a second because I, I think this is fascinating what you're talking about. And I, I'll, I'll put a tweet out that you recently issued where you talk about 80,000 Amish in Pennsylvania, 80,000 truckers in Pennsylvania, 800,000 veterans, 930,000 hunters, right? And you think about how tight Pennsylvania has been the last several, it's not going to get any wider. It's going to be a very close state. And yet those are the groups, those are the universes that we could target, right? Yes. Well, and, and that's why, you know, because a lot of people, they're I understand my doomers out there and I love you as much as everyone else, but that's why I put this data out there because the data just shows you if Joe Biden won the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania by 80,000 votes and there are 80,000 truckers, boom, that's the election. 80,000 Amish, boom, that's the election. And now when it comes to the hunters, people are probably like, oh, but Scott, all of the hunters are registered to vote, right? And all of the hunters actually vote in our elections. No, right. we know, for example, that 40% of Wisconsin hunters are not registered to vote. So therefore, wouldn't you, a logical and rational person, think that the same could be similar for Georgia and Minnesota and Michigan and, and other Midwestern states, for example, Iowa, Ohio? I believe so. And so therefore, that's why we have such a multi-pronged and multifaceted approach to doing voter registration. Yep. We're, we're doing this targeted. We're going to mud sales, which if nobody knows what a mud sale is, that's an auction that the Amish go to in Pennsylvania. We're going to the gun shows. We're going to the farmer's markets. Everything that we do is targeted and it's based on data. Yeah, by the way, so the current model that I saw uh, has, if you just take the states that are pretty guaranteed, right? Meaning uh, Texas, Republican, Massachusetts, Democrat, right? You add those up uh, before you get to the swing states. Trump is leading 251 to Joe Biden's 240, okay? That's just saying the, the gimmies. Pennsylvania has 19 electoral votes. Now, yeah. I didn't take math in college, but I, even I can do 251 plus 19 is 270, 270 wins the game. So game there over. you go. And that's why when, when we talk about Pennsylvania, there's a reason why Joe Biden literally every trip drops Air Force down, uh, one down in Pennsylvania, because he gets it too. But Scott, the thing that was interesting that you said a minute ago, and I, I'm, I just didn't want to let this go, is you said raw milk. And I, normally in a discussion, that would probably be like, da, 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 da. I'm reading this story the other day about how 
raw milk has become a massive issue throughout the Midwest. People are really looking at it as, as a health food and it's had a resurgence, not just in whole foods, but now people, and like issues like that, the access to raw milk for a lot of people is becoming a, a micro issue that might just get overlooked. To your point, like you might look at this national poll, or even a Pennsylvania poll and be like immigration, number one, taxes, number two. And, but yet somebody coming out and saying, I'm going to give access, I'm going to allow the FDA to finally allow raw milk sales, right? Which has yes. been a big deal since the, what, early 1900s, 1909, 1910. That one small issue yes. could make the difference. Let's call it 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 votes. For Pennsylvania dairy farmers, they're that, and it's not about, to your point, saying, oh, okay, we're gonna have to win all the truckers, or we're gonna have to win all the veterans, or all the hunters. But if you take the 80,000 that's the big delta in Pennsylvania and say, okay, Let's win 5,000 to 10,000 on raw milk. Let's win 5,000, 10,000 truckers. Let's win 5,000 to 10,000 hunters. And it's like chip, 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 chip. Absolutely. Well, and, and I hope the president, and congratulations to him on being our presumptive nominee. He has uh, accessed the uh, delegates that he needs in order to be our Republican nominee. So congratulations to President Trump. I hope that he's watching the Sean Spicer show. And I hope- Every President night, Trump every night. Every Excellent. Nice then President Trump, this message is for you. Please, I ask you, make a statement about supporting raw milk. Make a statement continually about supporting our dairy farmers and our farming community because President Trump, that community, the 80,000 in Pennsylvania, there is also a growing and thriving Amish community in Wisconsin. That issue alone could secure the Midwest for you and your presidency. Not just that, but Wisconsin. When he, yes. when he went in and reformed NAFTA, now called USMCA, one of the targeted audiences was Wisconsin dairy farmers. Again, how yes. much did we win Wisconsin by? Not a lot. So you go back and you start to look at what makes a difference on the margins. And yes. an issue like that is important. Let me let me kind of shift though. We're, let's talk about issues for a second. When you're engaging uh, with these folks, one of the things that the left has to count on, it's not even wants to or will, it, they must, is this issue of abortion and the overturning of Roe v. Wade. How much does that come up as an issue when you're engaging with people, especially maybe right-leaning targeted audiences at gun shows, Amish communities, et cetera? Um, my honest assessment to you from my experience, 5% uh, of the time, it's not an issue. This is a non-issue. When I was at the gun show in Harrisburg at the Great American Outdoor Show, where we registered 319 voters, by the way, all of them were 17 and 18 years old. You know who I spoke to? Spoke to? I spoke to a security woman there who was a grandmother. And she told me, Scott, my husband and I were retired under President Trump. I now have come out out of retirement and i have to work a job again under joe biden's unaffordable economy those are the conversations i'm having on second amendment issues on property taxes making life unaffordable that people have to move out of allegheny county and pittsburgh because the democrat policies there are pushing people into homelessness yeah. and it's issues of the economy affordability gun rights property rights the ability to grow your produce on your land and control what you can and cannot put into your body, those are the issues that I'm hearing about. All right, so today, the House, in a very bipartisan way, well over two-thirds of them, voted to, uh, to, to break up, to ensure U.S. ownership of TikTok. You mentioned these 17 and 18-year-olds coming into play. Kellyanne Conway is getting paid to support TikTok uh, and, and back the Chinese Communist Party uh, by this app, making partly a political argument saying, oh my gosh, you'll lose all these young voters. Now, first of all, again, it's not a ban on TikTok, it's just ensuring US ownership, which several people claim will, will maintain. How much does that issue come up? How much has TikTok been an issue the last couple of weeks? You know, I haven't really heard of it until recently, I share that same concern that I could see a ban of TikTok 
for example, galvanize an army of people to, if this is not done correctly, and if the Democrats are successfully able to say, Republicans took away your TikTok, they took away your source of income, they took away your livelihood. I could see that very well. But, but uh, fair enough. But how do you do that if Nancy Pelosi is out there advocating for the bill and Joe Biden signs it? The Democrats have been successful, <laughs> have been successful at selling things to us before that they themselves didn't believe in. I, 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 I OK, <laughs> that's actually uh, OK. Actually, <laughs> point taken. It's like, do you think that they need to be consistent? No. Um, I had Rand Paul on the show yesterday and I was telling him that uh, let me just pull this to get it clear. I think it was 82 uh, percent. Uh, yeah, here we go. 82% according to a Peterson Foundation poll say that they want the president and the Congress to spend more time addressing debt and deficit. Yes. Um, 80% say that their level of concern in debt and deficit issues has increased over the last few years. I get it. I've been doing this a long time. I'm clearly not as long as Joe Biden, but people always say they want the debt and deficit, but then when it comes election time, it's like, what have you brought back to the district? So there's always this inconsistency in the logic, yep. which is cut the deficit, but bring the bacon home. What what level of debt and deficit do you see there being tolerance for among people that you're trying to get to engage in the process? I think a winning issue for Republicans, if we're going to talk about removing things from the budget and cutting the debt and deficit is immediately cutting U.S. aid why are we funding countries that hate us? Why yeah. are we giving money to the Palestinian Authority? I think that is where I would start, at least if I were an elected official, is talking about how we can make cuts to U.S. aid. Yeah, and, well, and also waste. I mean, there's so much crap in the budget. Just you mentioned, you know, to stay on our Pennsylvania bandwagon, there was just an earmark for a couple million dollars yes. for a sex club in Philadelphia that both senators were like, I didn't know that was in there. And it's like, that's the kind of crap that gets thrown into these bills when no one's able to read them and they're trillions of dollars. Exactly. Well, and and if you want to talk about making sure that we are cutting the, the debt and deficit, then we should have a bill, for example, that prohibits federal bills from being in the thousands of pages <laughs> and also giving a, an adequate amount of time for each member of Congress to actually read that legislation before voting on it. You know, simple things, common sense things. Yeah. I would love there to be a quiz, right? You have to <laughs> like, not only do you have to read it, but then you have to answer and it could be easy. It's like the citizenship test. I always think the citizenship test is going to be hard. I helped someone when I was on active duty study for it. It's 10 questions. And it's the multiple choice. So it's, I, I say that because I always thought like, this is going to be like, you're, you're, you're getting to be a citizen of the United States. This is going to be a challenge. And it's like, how many flag, how many, you know, how many stars are in the US flag? You know, I mean, this is not, if you're, unless you're a moron, you can't, you, you're going to pass this thing. Um, I want to ask you one last thing that was interesting. There's a, a, a new set of data that came out. Axios had it this morning and it shows the trend line for blacks, Hispanics, and whites. The interesting thing is, you know, not it's not massive, but there's a shift among blacks affiliating with the Democrat or the Republican Party, yes. and especially among Hispanics. And this is what Axios writes. It says, new data shows Democrats' longtime advantage with black, Latino, and Asian American voters has shrunk to its lowest point in more than 60 years, creating a massive vulnerability for President Biden and congressional Democrats. Are you seeing this on the ground? Yes. Really? Yes, without hesitation. Anecdotally, from my experience, when I go to Philly and I hear, wow, life is so much better. Life is so much more inexpensive under President Trump. We had our, more money in our packets. When I was in Louisiana, I was at a gas station and we're talking to a black woman who's ringing me up and we're just talking to her, you know, how do you, how do you feel about president Trump? How do you feel about Biden? And she goes, well, my husband who works on an oil rig, he had more opportunities under president Trump. Life is better. We had more money under president Trump. And furthermore, because I'm a data guy and you're a data guy, I track the Louisiana voter registration every single month on the first of the month. And we actually have voter registration 
by demographics. So I can say this accurately, that in the last month, and actually this has been months of data, the Democrats in the state of Louisiana are consistently losing Black voters, while Republicans consistently are gaining Black voters. And I know this based on voter registration by Republican data, by demographics. So that's only one state alone that I can tell you, for example, but we are seeing this in the data. Yeah, it's funny. I uh, Let me just keep going in here, but it says, uh, Democrats' advantage among Black, Latino, and Asian voters is at its lowest since 1960. Uh, and then it says a New York Times Siena College poll came out March 2nd, found that President Biden led former president by just 5644 among non-white Americans. OK, wow, that's that's 12 point lead. You would think that's good, except that's a group that Biden won by almost 50 points in 2020. Yes. That's not good. I mean, th- they they have a problem. And this gets back to what you and I keep talking about. There's things there are trend lines underneath the surface the raw milk kind of issues that that national pollsters can't pick up because the sample size is too small. And maybe it's not going to affect a national vote. But in Arizona or Georgia or Pennsylvania, we are talking about tens of thousands of votes making the difference. Well, that's the key. And one last thing that I really want to harp on, because we're talking about minority communities, we're talking about those issues that are boiling up, and we're talking about the data. The last thing that I really want to hit on that I will be doing within these next two weeks is I was just invited, Sean, to a mosque. I'm not going to say where because I don't want that place to be under attack. But the entire Muslim community at this mosque has welcomed me to come register their whole community to vote. And they want to change from Democrat to Republican. Why? Because here are the issues that are boiling underneath. A, they are so irate over President Biden and his anti-peace in the Middle East policies. They are tired of their community because of Hamas and Joe Biden supporting Hamas and the Palestinian Authority, they are tired of their community being seen as anti-peace. They go, Scott, we are peaceful people. We are Americans. We are American Mm -hmm. Muslims. And they said American first. And furthermore, the women especially, and yes, the men too, these fathers and mothers are tired of the, and I'm going to be careful with my language, tired of the explicit. (laughs) and graphic material that are being shown to our children within the Uh, whole system. See, that's another one of those issues that you won't hear on national news, but I think you're absolutely right. The number, and it's, I bet you it's not just one demographic. I bet you it's, it transcends a lot of parents who are tired of materials getting pushed into their kids from the left that are saying, we're going to expose your kids to this type yeah. of material and it's not popping up. Scott Pressler, I I hope you do get that phone call from the RNC. I always appreciate you coming back and explaining what you're doing because we can't just sit back and say, well, the poll says we're going to win. It takes work on the ground to motivate people to register. As I said before, it's not cheap. It's not easy. It takes individuals like you knocking on the doors, having these conversations, making those transactions person by person. You know, when you talk about 319, someone might say, wow, wow. You go, hey, guess what? We lost several states by 10,000 votes. And guess what? You do 319, 319, 319, 320, 340. And suddenly you go, wow, that's 10,000 new voters and you win the state. So Scott, thanks for being here again. Thanks for all you're doing. And let's, uh, let's, Let's try to check in in a little bit here what additional successes you're having on the campaign trail. Yeah, thank you. And to any of our viewers, if you see value in the work that I'm doing, my organization is Early Vote Action, earlyvoteaction.com. And Sean, thank you again for always having me on your show. You bet, guys. All right. Uh, again, folks, thanks for joining us tonight. Please continue to subscribe, YouTube, Spotify, Rumble, Apple, all of them five-star reviews, hit that hit that uh, notification button because we do these big live events that have been awesome. I love your Q&As. I love the super chats that you give us. Uh, you never know when it's going to pop up because I've got a busy schedule. So if you hit the notification button, you'll always know. We've got a great panel discussion for you coming your way tomorrow. I'll see you back here then. Have a good night. 
Well, if you enjoyed this content, make sure to like this video, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get more.